let's make some new forms for Pokemon like Ninetales and Aromatisse that give them the typings they so rightly deserve. So, in a previous video, I introduced the gimmick of my Fakemon region, Cornera, which is called Nucleotypes. A quick summary is that it alters, or more accurately, completes the part of a Pokemon's DNA that gives them their typing. This results in old Pokemon gaining new typings, new evolutions, and even new forms called Genos forms. Think Megas, but permanent. So today, we're going to take a look at some new Genos forms. And one new Nucleotype evolution. Because there was literally no other video I could put it in that made sense. But before we take a look at those, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with future videos on the Cornera region. So let's begin with a trio of Genos forms. The trio in question being Sock, Throw, and my new entry to the line, Kick. Let's actually start with Kick. I got a lot of comments about how Kick should have been purple or yellow. Well, there's a small detail I forgot to point out when I introduced Kick. When you put the trio together, what do you notice if you read the colors left to right? Red, white... Yes, that is why Kick is white, because Murka. Well, that's not the only reason why it is white. The other reason you're about to find out. Meet Genos Kick, a fighting ice type. Fun fact, this is the only one of my own Fakemon that gets a Genos form and it's only because it's part of a trio with other Mons I thought deserved a different typing. Speaking of those other Mons, here is Geno Sock and Geno's Throw, Electric Fighting and Fire Fighting. Like I said when I introduced Chop and Kick, I always felt that Sock and Throw deserved a bit more love. So on top of already giving them Tyrogue and Hitmontop equivalents, I also gave them new forms. I know that may seem like a lot, but they deserve it. I mean, look at these kings. So let me explain why I picked the typings I did for these two. So, Throw is firefighting because, well, it's red. Kind of self-explanatory there. And I know, another firefighting type. But keep in mind, the only other firefighting types currently are starter Pokemon. So since Throw is red, and that means fire, Sock is blue, so that means water, right? Well, with Sock there's another design detail that caught my eye. The crest on its face. To me, it looks like a little lightning bolt, and other electric types have been blue before. On top of that, lightning in real life typically gives off a blue or purple light against the clouds. When put together, this trio makes up the types of the move Tri-Attack. And when you include the fact they're all fighting type in that, which fighting is essentially a synonym for attacking, it all comes together so well. So let's make that their nickname, the Tri-Attack Trio. And one more thing, Chop is gray, not white. Next up, let's talk about Ninetales. Vulpix and Ninetales draw inspiration from the Kitsune, Japanese fox yokai that are said to have many tails, extremely long lifespans, and a plethora of supernatural abilities such as breathing fire and super intelligence. Ninetales is more specifically based on the Kyubi no Kitsune, or the Ninetailed Fox Spirit. This is a special Kitsune that has lived for a thousand years, after which its fur turns gold and it gains a ninth tail. The Kitsune are said to grow even wiser as they age, so naturally the Kyubi no Kitsune are extremely intelligent. Ninetales carries this inspiration in many ways, primarily having access to a few ghost and psychic type moves, and that multiple dex entries mention it living for a thousand years due to the power in its tails. Many have made the argument that Ninetales should be Fire Ghost given its yokai inspiration, ability to curse people that grab its tail, and it learning Will-O-Wisp. But, something being a yokai doesn't always mean it's a ghost in Japanese folklore. Kind of like the word supernatural doesn't always mean ghosts. The word for spirit is also used to reflect a state of knowledge or enlightenment. Just like the Kyubi no Kitsune, Ninetales are also extremely intelligent and can understand human speech, as well as it has the ability to hypnotize opponents and even control their minds. So, I think Fire Psychic type is more fitting. With that said, here is Genos Ninetales. I very much wanted this to look like an older and more experienced version of Ninetales. It can now manifest the power within its tails physically through these fiery orbs. Its body is now darker, which is a reference to oxidation, 
which turns gold and other metals darker over time, which is a reflection of how Kitsune get wiser over time. The markings on its face are a reference to geisha, which are women renowned for their many indispensable talents, much like Ninetales' many abilities. While we're on the topic of ghosts, let's talk about Banet, a Pokemon born from an abandoned doll, fueled by a grudge against the person who threw it away, living just to hunt for them. So let's make this sad boy happy. This is Genos Banet, a ghost fairy type. Thanks to the power of nucleotypes, part of Banet has been restored to the doll it was before it became a Pokemon. Rather than spending its time trying to find the person who tossed it away, it tries to make itself seem cuter, in hopes a new person will love it. That's right, Genos Banet doesn't have any time to waste on toxic exes. Speaking of toxic, let's talk about a Pokemon I think deserves the poison typing, Aromatisse. Aromatisse is based all around perfume. Its body is shaped like a perfume bottle slash powder puff, its face is a reference to plague doctors and that they would put perfume in their masks to mask the smell of the dead, and it emits different aromas, hence its name. In almost all its dex entries, it is stated that Aromatisse can emit both good and bad scents, and some scents so strong and foul that those nearby can lose their sense of smell or even lose their will to fight. A strong and foul smell, huh? Almost like a skunk, like, I don't know, Stunky and Skuntank? Who are poison type? For that exact reason? On top of that, perfume can be poisonous when ingested, so... Yeah. Genos Aromatisse. Very poison type. It leans more into the Plague Doctor side of things with its design, but also gives it a little extra flamboyant hat. And it even adds a little bit of a trench coat salesman kind of thing in there, like the you wanna buy a sundial guy from Hercules. Genos Aromatis can create its own perfumes and poisons. If it doesn't like you, it will trick you into thinking it's giving you perfume when it's actually giving you poison. So don't get on Genos Aromatis' bad side. So Dredagon has multiple reasons it should be a rock type. For one, it's design basis. It is based on the red-headed Rock Agama. Two, it's dex entries. It is said that Drudagon dwells in caves, you know, where most rock types hang out. And when it gets too cold, Drudagon will become immobile. This is reminiscent of gargoyles who turn to stone during the day. It even says that Drudagon's head is harder than rock. So let's meet Genos Drudagon, a dragon rock type. I wanted to lean more into its already jagged design to make it feel even more like a rock type than it already did. And it is now also based on Mayan art and statues. Genos Drudagon are actually one of the few Genos Pokemon who can be found in the wild. This is because it resides in the cave where the crystals that make nucleotypes are found. There are many a tale of Genos Drudagon, one being it being a guardian of a lost city filled with unlimited treasure. Yes. It is also an El Dorado reference, because I love that movie. These last two Pokemon I think deserve the sound type. First is Maractus. I mean, this one should be obvious, right? It's literally a dancing cactus, and its name is based on Maracas, and its Japanese name even has Mariachi mixed in as well. So let's amp up the Mariachi inspiration. Meet Genos Maractus, a grass sound type. Its power of song and dance have increased enormously, especially because now it has to defend itself from predators even more fiercely because it bears fruit. This is of course a reference to prickly pear cacti and the prickly pears they bear. Man, say that ten times fast. Like I said before, this design fully leans into the mariachi inspiration, giving it a full mariachi musician's outfit. Lastly is that nucleotype evolution I was talking about. This one is also pretty obvious. Chimeco. It's a wind chime. What else do I need to say? When giving a Chimeco a nucleotype, it gains the sound type, and at level 40 can evolve into... Skeleco. I find this one pretty fun because it's kind of a reference to skeletons being depicted playing their ribs like a xylophone. But that's all the Genos forms and nucleotype evolutions in Cornera. Make sure to let me know which one in this video was your favorite. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, we now have a Discord. So if you want to talk Fakemon, share your thoughts on Cornera, or just meet others in this community, you can do it there. Click the link in the description down below to join. But with that, I will see you guys next time.